So have you ever wanted to set up your computer to be able to work with WordPress without the need for a hosting company? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you just how easy that is with one simple piece of software. Best of all, it's completely free. So let's just take a look at that piece of software, how to install it, set it up and get going with WordPress on our local computer. My name is Paul C and welcome to WP Touch where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at Local by Flywheel, a free piece of software that allows us to install WordPress on our local computer. Not only that, but it allows us to do things like duplicate sites, set up templates and so much more. Like I say, this is completely free and a great environment to test your WordPress skills and to develop websites without the need for a hosting company. So what we're going to do is we're going to just jump over onto our computer and take a look at how we can set this up and how we can start working with Local by Flywheel. So to grab yourself a copy of Local by Flywheel, all you need to do is visit local.getflywheel.com and you're going to come to this website where you can watch the video to see exactly what it's about or you can just simply download it and start installing it. So if you've got the free download option, you can see we've got the choice for both Windows and Mac. We're going to stick to Windows, in this instance Windows 10, but the whole process is pretty much the same once you've installed it. So you can put your relevant details in if you want to, click get it now and make sure you've got at least 500 megabytes of space on the hard drive that you're going to install Flywheel to. So once you've done that, we're now ready to start Flywheel up for the first time. Now when you go through the install process, you're going to have a couple of prompts that are going to ask you to allow certain access to your computer. You're going to need to make sure that you say yes to all that before you can actually go in and start using Flywheel. So as long as you're happy with those different changes it's going to make to your computer, you should then have Flywheel set up and ready to start. That's what we're going to do next. We're going to start our Flywheel and take a look at the options inside there to get started with creating our local versions of our websites. So I've started up Flywheel and this is the plain and simple interface you're going to get when you start up for the first time. If you want to, you can come into the settings and come into preferences and you can go through there and you can set up all the various different things that you want to make sure that everything is configured the way you'd like it to. So if you're working on a specific version of PHP on the server that you're working with, or you're going to be using a MySQL or MySQL version or a particular web server, you can set all those things up at this point to ensure that your environment you're working with offline is as close as is possible to what you're going to work with online. That should minimize any potential problems. You can see this is for our new site default, so we can set those up in there. We then got options for exporting the different file exclusion filters. We've got advanced, which you can go in and you can see there's an experimental option, which you can enable or disable depending upon what you'd like to test out. But for the most part, most of these things are not really that important. Blueprint's pretty useful because this allows you to save a particular setup as a blueprint, a sort of preset should we say and then you can just load it in with all those different things so if you use the theme for the basis for everything or element or element or pro for example those plugins you can just save that as a blueprint then when you create a new site that blueprint can be applied to it and all those different plugins and settings can be applied just to speed up the development process You've also then got add-ons, which are add-ons for the actual local by flywheel itself So, you know, these are kind of things we're going to leave as they are for now so we're going to come back at this, we're going to close out of this, and we're now ready to go and create our first site. Now we're using the free version of Flywheel. You can, if you've got a Flywheel account, link the two together and you get some expanded functionality. But we're not going to worry too much about that. We're just looking at how we can use our local computer to create and set up our own WordPress-based websites. So what we need to do is click on Create a New Site. That'll allow us to go in and name it. So we're going to call this, for example, Ocean WP. So let's just say I'm testing that out. We open the expand the advanced options you can see we've got the domain we want to use the local site path and do we want to use a blueprint at this point we haven't actually set up a blueprint so we don't have anything we can use in there so you can see we don't really have much of an option we click on continue we've then got preferred or custom so you can see this is using the setup that we could have configured in the preferences i'll leave that as is we can also connect to our flywheel account if we have a flywheel account. If we want to set something up custom, you can see we can click on there and we can now change the PHP version, the server and the MySQL versions. It also tells you you need to download some diff uh, different dependencies if you enable this option. So we're not going to worry, we're going to leave it as preferred and we'll click on continue. We can now go through and give it the username, the password and the email address that we want to use for this particular copy of WordPress on our local machine. And again, we've got advanced options to say, is this a multi-site? Well, no, we're not going to worry about that. So we can just close that down. So I'll leave those as they are and we'll click on add site. 
you can see that and now go through ask us are we sure we want to do this particular change we'll say yes we do that will now go through and start downloading all of the files that are needed to install a fresh clean and most up-to-date copy of wordpress on our server once you let that run through, you can see there's all the different things that have been set up for us. We can log into our admin at this point or view the site. We can switch it on and off from development mode. We can also stop the site if we don't want this to be running in the background, or we can come down and we say we can stop all of the sites. So when you start to build up a lot more local sites, you don't necessarily want to have all those sites running at the same time. So you can stop any or all of those at any point. So that's a nice way of working and keeping things just clean and tidy. So you can see this now goes through and tells us what's been set up. We can then go through and see the database and if we want to jump into the admin side of things we can come into that if we want to set up a fake ssl we can do that and we've also got utilities where we can open up and start up mail hog so we can test any kind of mail setup again you can see we've got the option to connect to flywheel and we can live link enable this now live link is effectively a way that other people external to the website can actually access this so if you've got a client and you're setting up flywheel to create the site for them and you want to give them access to it you can make a live link on here and then you can share that link with them and they'll be able to log in and take a look at that on your local development server so that's a great way of being able to sort of keep everything offline while you're developing and then just give your client access to it should they need to to just say yes i like what you've done or can we make some changes etc so all you need to do to generate a live link is simply click enable It'll take a second or so. There's the live link that you can use, and that's linked to your account now that's part of Flywheel. And if you click on that, you'll see that we open up a browser window and it tells us, okay, there's the site. So it's now accessible externally, not just on your local server. So that's pretty cool. I like that option. We'll just disable that for now because I don't need it. If I want the admin, for example, I can click. So that will then take us through to our development location. So you can see oceanwp.local. We've then got to just simply put in our login details and once we've done that, we can simply log into our dashboard for our test site, if I can remember my password, that is. Once we've logged in, you can see now we've got our dashboard and we can start working and doing whatever we want in there. So let's close that down a second. If we want to view the site, we can simply click on View Site and that'll take us through and you can see again oceanwp.local or whatever you name the site when you set that up at the beginning. So it's incredibly easy to just come in and start working on your site exactly as you expect. So we can go into the dashboard or we can go to the front end of the site and start working. So you've seen how easy it is to start working with those things. But what else do we have on here? We can easily jump over and take a look at our database should we want to make any changes directly in there. So we can jump into the database, come into the adminer, and you can see that'll open up something that's very similar to PHP My Admin. It allows you to go through to all the tables. We can do some basic things in here. We can open up and take a look at any of the information in any of the different settings of our database. So that's quite useful should you need to go in and make some changes or edit any of your database itself directly. The site setup, you can see we've got all this information. If we want to change the domain at any point, so we might want to change this to OceanWP2, for example, we can click on change, update those details on there, change the domain, and that's all done for us. We can also right click at the sort of left hand side of the local sites and you can see that'll open up a range of different things for us. Much the same as the admin and view site and so on, but we've also got things like restart, stop, we can clone it, or we can save it as a blueprint. So let's just say we'll just go in and add a couple of plugins in. So let's just open up the admin of the site, download a couple of plugins just so we've got something in there and we'll save that as a blueprint and we'll create a new site that should have all of those things set up for us. So I've gone ahead and downloaded Ocean WP. I've also set up Elementor and Ocean Extra as a couple of plugins. So I've now got a basic blueprint for the future sites that I want to develop. So I'm gonna come out of this, come back to Flywheel, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this local site that's set up with all those different things that I want inside configured. Right click and say Save as Blueprint. So that gives us a couple of simple options. The first thing is the blueprint name, what we wanna name this. So we're gonna call this Ocean WP Blueprint. You can then say what files do you want to exclude so you can see we've got any zip files any gz files and so on so we'll leave that as is and we'll just say save the blueprint that'll go through now and save everything that we need and now if we come in and create a new site so let's just come in and say we want to add a new local site we'll call this test blueprint advanced options we'll open that up and you see we can say use a blueprint this time so we can say we want to use the ocean wp blueprint we'll click on that and we say create site from blueprint, which is easier done than said. That will then go through now and download everything that's needed to extract that and set everything up on our new test site for us. There we go, once it's downloaded everything, you can see it's now been set up. 
So now if we just go ahead and log into that, so we'll say we'll log in through the admin. Username and password should be all set up for us, so we're ready to go. So I've got my login section, put my details in, and just simply click on login. That's now taken us into the dashboard, and if we take a look, if we come out to appearance and themes, we'll find that Ocean WP is now installed and set up as our, our key theme. And if we come into the plugin section, look at the installed plugins, you can see Elementor and Ocean Extra is already set up in there for us. So this is going to drastically speed up the process, especially if you have a kind of a dedicated way of setting things up. You generally use Ocean WP or Astra or any of those kinds of themes, specific plugins you always use. You can have it set up so it'll just quickly and easily download the latest version of WordPress, add all the plugins and the themes in there, set everything up the way you like it to be set up and then you're good to go so for me as someone that develops a lot of websites and tests a lot of things out as well when i'm doing reviews and demos and tutorials this is a godsend because it means i can simply just set a blueprint up that has all those key things that i need and then just add the extra bits that i want in when i need a new test site and that's pretty much the key things that you can do with Flywheel or local by Flywheel, which I think is a great test environment. And it's also incredibly easy. Now, I've always used XAMP. That's something that I think is really, really good. But you do have to go through the process of setting everything up each and every time. But it is a little bit more sort of hands on, whereas this is a little bit more automated, which I do like. So that's Local by Flywheel, a great free piece of software that allows us to set up our computer as a development environment for working with WordPress. Hopefully what you've seen is it's very easy and very versatile to work with. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified every time new content is added. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else you'd like to see covered on this channel, please pop those in the comment section below and let's get that conversation started. As always, my name has been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time, take care.